So here I've got my accurate layout, which I'll just switch to reference mode in the object lister. And then I can import my design reference, which is a polygon mesh, which has been saved as an OBJ file, so I'll need to switch my filter to display all files. So I can see the polygon file and say open. So if I do a pick object and a look at, we can see that it's a small car model pointing downwards. And if I open the information window, we don't have an attribute section, which is only for key point curves. Instead, we have the transform info. And you can see that the scale is shown as one. So this is obviously not one millimeter, but it's the creation scale. So the scale of the object when it first appeared in Alias. So I can rotate that now and I'll just do it by eye. But then here in the information window, I can see that that should probably be 90 degrees. So I can correct that in the window and then get the car lined up to the grid. And I can do the same with the scaling. So I'll start to scale that up and I'll just close the info window so I can see the model. And if I keep scaling, if it's a bit slow with the mouse, I can do a look at again on the bigger car and that'll get more responsive. So I'll just get it roughly to size. And then again, if I take a look in the information window, it looks like it should be at a scale of 10. So I could just adjust each of these three values, but don't forget the prompt window and the transform tools. So I could just use the scale tool and type in absolute 10 once, and then all three values get set. Now to find out why I had to scale this by 10, I'll take a look at the import options. And then down here on the OBJ options, the default was set to centimetres. And if I'd known that in advance, I could have set it to millimetres and got it in at the right size first time. But it's easy enough to scale it. So finally, I can move that into position over my wheel layout. And now I have a design reference to use as a guide when we later create NURB surfaces for the car. So I'll put that onto a layer and then I'll turn them both off. Now the information window works in the same way for other objects I create. So for example, on the surfaces palette here, I have these primitive shapes, which we're going to use for the next few tutorials. So I'll just place a cylinder on the grid and then just do a look at and shade it up. Now the information window shows a scale of 100 and all primitives get created at this initial size of 100 millimeters. And I have this RGB manipulator that only appears the first time I create a primitive. But I can use it to scale and move and rotate the object. But I use it mostly to just explain the idea of local axes. Now you see here that now I've rotated the cylinder the Z direction of the object is different from the Z direction of the world grid. And this works to our advantage because if I do a non-proportional scale in the Z direction, then I get the result I probably want, which is to keep the shape as a tube. I can reset those local axes back to being in the same orientation as the grid axes if I want to using a tool called zero transforms. But for this cylinder, it means that now I'd be shearing the shape as I scale it which isn't really useful, so we don't tend to use it all that often. Now those local axes are determined when the object is created or imported. So if I now create another one in the perspective window, you can see that the local Z axis is in line with the center of the cylinder. But if I now create a second one using the left view, it'll be in a different orientation. And this time it's the local y-axis that's running in line with the cylinder. So the creation axes start off in line with the grid axes. And so if I pick these two and do a non-proportional scale in the z-direction, I get a different result. So it's important to think about which window you create your geometry in. So if I wanted to create some basic wheel shapes using cylinders, then I'd choose this left view grid snap the cylinder to the center, and then scale it up. And I can do that to 620 accurately in the prompt line. 
And then I could choose non-proportional scale and stretch it in the y direction and then move it out to the wheel position. So I can do that in the information window and make it minus 750 in y. So this is something you may want to do in your model. Just create and copy and paste some wheels and practice the relative and absolute scaling to get them to be the right size for the car. So finally, I just want to take a look at an example where zero transforms is useful. If I display the mesh again, and let's say I wanted to stretch it vertically to explore a taller design, it doesn't scale in the direction I'd expect. And that's because I rotated it after I imported it, so its local axes are out of sync with the grid. So this is a good example where using zero transforms will return the axes to the grid directions and make the interaction match the mouse buttons and so feel much more instinctive. So let's save that model as we'll use it in section 3 when we start to build NURB surfaces. And in the next tutorial we'll use more primitive shapes to practice using pivots and snapping to quickly build geometry.